It's been a few years since I've added a video of my cider press and I, over time I've made some upgrades to it so I just wanted to show you around. This is a cider press that I built. I started with this screw press here that um, I purchased locally online. It was just a rusted out uh, grape press. Um, so I started with that, cleaned it up, gave it a fresh paint job. Uh, and then I built the structure around that. The wood structure is all cherry wood. It's nice and heavy timbers. You see the legs are nice and heavy and thick. Heavy framework. And just as important is the joinery of the wood pieces. I use dovetail joinery on all the case parts. You see the dovetails? on the top here. Dovetails are on the hopper up here on top and down here on the the pan frame. Also are the uh, the joinery on the leg structure is also mortise and tenon. It's a housed mortise and tenon in here with these shoulders like this. It's very very important you have heavy heavy joint woodwork and joinery. And up here on the front as well you can see the housed mortise and tenon joint. All the pressure from that screw is being screwed down through this structure onto this part right here. And so you have to have very strong joinery in place. And then all the pieces, in addition to the woodworking joinery, like this casework here, are held together with heavy bolts. Let's start looking up here at the top. The apples get put into the hopper up here on top and this arm right here this lever arm goes up and down and the apples roll underneath and then you pull down on this lever and push the apples against the grinder head so let's take a look underneath at the grinder the grinder is on a maple drum with stainless steel screws the stainless screws or would do the actual cutting of the apples. And this maple drum has a one inch steel shaft going through it. And if you look down in there, that one inch steel shaft coming out of that maple drum and then into these pillow blocks. These pillow blocks are also very important. Those pillow blocks keep everything very strong, straight and tight. And then that shaft goes out the side and that's where the flywheel is attached over there. And then the drive mechanism, the drive mechanism is um, over here. So the shaft comes out here and I have a bicycle sprocket here with a chain. That chain goes around this larger, that larger crank underneath. And that's what drives it. Now last year I started a separate drive mechanism and that's what this one is here. And that goes all the way down onto that sprocket. And then from that sprocket, um, there's a bicycle behind me and, and the bicycle would turn. But I haven't fine tuned that yet. The chain keeps popping off, so I need to keep working on that. Maybe next year I'll be able to finish it. But independent of that, the way this whole thing goes is you turn this hand crank right here. So when you turn the hand crank, you turn that hand crank, it turns that large sprocket in the back, which turns that little sprocket underneath that's attached to the arbor. That of course turns the grinder and that flywheel keeps your momentum going. The hand crank has on it uh, another bicycle part, which is a single speed freewheel. I housed, I, I machined this housing here and, and inset that freewheel and welded it in place and I put my handle in the middle. And so that way, when you turn the handle and let go, you listen, you can hear it. The handle stays down low here and doesn't keep turning with the wheel. That's a very important safety issue. Because if you let go and that freewheel wasn't there, that handle would keep turning and maybe hit you. So that's the drive mechanism.
let's put this down and we'll keep going around um, so once you grind the apples they fall down underneath the, the grinder and into this chute and if you look up underneath there let me get this basket out of the way all right so if you look up underneath there you can see the there's the grinder head and I have this brass chute this funnel and all the apple guts fall down out of that funnel and into the waiting basket below when your basket is full that basket is lined by the way with a mesh bag you slide that basket forward and underneath the screw press and so the screw press um, so once you have your basket full of apple guts <clears throat> you put that maple block I have a maple block here that maple block goes on top of, on top of the apples and then your screw press comes down and that's when all the fun begins and all your juice starts to flow out the juice comes down onto the stainless steel pan here and then funnels down out this little spout into a waiting five gallon drink cooler. A couple of other additional add-ons for uh, my press lately. Um, I have a nice little cup holder here so when you're working hard and you want a little sip of cider you can grab yourself a cup, take a little sip. Here's a, a wooden handle here as you put it up here on the wheel give you a little bit more leverage to turn that screw really tight against the apple juice or against the apple guts rather and it hangs on a nice hook another little fun feature is each year I just put a stamp on there a date on there when we made cider and you can see I made cider for the past uh, six years the last couple of years I've been making cider at Halloween for the trick-or-treaters and so I'd set up out on the street, trick-or-treaters would come by, they might even want to work the press a little bit, and they would get a sip of cider. It's really fun to have princesses and stormtroopers and whatever else come by and enjoy some fresh cider. And then this year, um, I'm really excited about this new, new add-on is my new flywheel. I've been looking for just the right one for the past few years and I found a nice one on eBay. This is a double flywheel. This has two wheels that are bolted together. Of course, it didn't look like this when I bought it. It was rusted and dusted and um, sitting in a barn for a very long time. I believe this wheel is from the, the 1800s. But anyway, I took it all apart, sandblasted it, cleaned it up, and then gave it a really cool paint job. Uh, the, the spokes here are um, applied, the graphics on these spokes are applied with hydrographics. Hydrographics is a new hobby I picked up this year, and so I thought I would show that off a little bit uh, on this new flywheel. So I'm very excited uh, to have that in place, and that wheel weighs over 50 pounds. It's very heavy. So there's a lot of momentum in it. Um, a lot of force going into grinding the apples. I do have two baskets down there for underneath um, the press. <clears throat> so there's the other one. Let me slide that back into place. So when you get your first basket full, when the first basket is full, you slide it forward and you put your second basket in there. So that allows you to continue grinding apples while this basket is getting squished. All the juice is coming out over here. The number of people to work this thing, you can have a large team, um, three people actually on the machine working, but then you can have other people working around back washing and cleaning apples and, and taking care of that kind of business. But one person's up here uh, handling this carefully pushing down on the on the apples into the grinder head 
and then you of course you would have a person here turning the crank this is usually a rotational station here where uh, you get kind of tired turning that crank so you can have a little team of people walking in and out of that doing that and then around front of course you can have somebody on the screw press when it's time to squish the juice out so this is a great activity to keep people busy I usually have a bunch of little guys out here uh, working on it all the kids and their friends and uh, maybe even some scouts and that kind of thing so uh, it's a fun thing to do once a year lubrication is important um, the proper lubrication is important <clears throat> on these steel components um, like my shafts here and the chain links and um, inside here you have the pillow blocks all of this is lubricated with mineral oil or mineral grease it's very important of course not to use machine oil but also vegetable oil gums up and turns rancid and kind of smells after a while but mineral grease is very very good uh, it's it's food safe um, it's inexpensive and it does a good job so after I, I pressure wash this off I pressure wash this off every year after I use it because you can imagine every one of these little grooves and and corners and uh, just is gummed up full of apple juice and apple guts so I wash it really well let it dry and then uh, I lube it all down all these bare exposed metal surfaces with mineral oil mineral grease and that has it ready to go for the next year and that's where I am right now I just pulled it out the shed I'm kind of giving it a look over seeing what needs to be done of course I put my new wheel on it this year so I was excited about that um, I don't know if I'll have time to keep working on the bicycle uh, situation here I don't know if I'll have time to do that this year but I'll have it out at Halloween I'll get a follow-up video of little trick-or-treaters working it and having a good time and uh, I'll update when I get that video ready. So thanks for looking.